Hey guys, Blazing Wrath here, and today I'm going to give my thoughts and feedback on Halo Infinite's weapons. Now I have uh, I have to talk about a few things before I go over it, my suggestions, because the changes I'm going to recommend are going to be very minimal for one big reason. The weapon meta heavily changed when 343 turned PvP on for two hours, and I think weapons really started to show their colors uh, when PvP was active. So that's why the changes are going to be minimal. Another thing I should mention is, I know. I know guys, I know. Automatics have headshot multipliers even on plasma weapons, and every gun that doesn't have an optics has a standard zoom. If I had my way, there wouldn't be any headshot multipliers on autos, or like not every gun needs uh, need to be able to zoom. But like I said before, changes are going to be minimal because we only played PvP for two hours. Now with that being said, let's begin. First, let's talk about the assault rifle. Overall, I really like it, but its range is a bit too much. It's like 343's weapon sandbox team is really stubborn and didn't, and still didn't really learn their lesson from Halo 5. The fact that the gun has headshot multipliers, again, doesn't help either. That being said, I do like the recoil pattern on the gun, as well as its bloom. I found myself bursting the trigger to try and land those headshots. So here are the numbers on the AR. And here are my suggestions. As you can see, I would recommend nerfing its damage a bit, and probably increase the bloom because the weapon doesn't drastically spread until reaching near the end of the mag. I think the crosshairs should bloom a bit earlier. Next, let's talk about the Pulse Carbine. Overall, I like this weapon. However, its damage output is surprisingly high for, for a plasma weapon. But when actually using this against bots and real players, it's actually not bad. And it's just really good at stripping shields. So I probably wouldn't change the damage output despite it being uh, the damage output being really high. With that being said, here are the stats I got. And here are my suggestions. Like I said, its damage output may be high on paper, but in practice, it's just a shield stripper. And I really like that, and I think that's uh, what's fun about it. Also, because it's just a shield stripper, when using it in a real match, it's a great assist weapon. I was using the Pulse Carbine, just, just stripping shields and constantly uh, kept switching to my sidekick. Or I just used it and let my teammates finish off uh, the other team. Probably the reason I'd recommend decreasing the tracking and increasing the projectile speed is because the Needler is already a tracking weapon alongside the charged plasma pistol shot. Next is the BR, and this is probably my favorite BR in the series. I don't have much to say on it, except the fact that when PvP was turned on, the BR really started to shine, and the sidekick really started to struggle to compete against it. Its damage output is fine, but here are the stats. And here are my recommendations. According to the game's menus, the BR has a 2.5 time scope, rather than its usual 2 time scope. So I recommend making it a 2 times zoom, just so the side can, uh, can compete against it. Also, I know probably not everyone remembers Halo 4, but Halo 4's BR has a very subtle recoil mechanic, where every time you pulled the trigger, the reticle moved up, but it never reset back to its uh, original position. Not sure about that change, but just thought I'd mention it.
Next up is the Commando. Not sure how I feel about this weapon. I like it, but it's a little unclear on what tier does this weapon fit in. Is it tier 1 like the Assault Rifle, Sidekick, and BR? Or is it tier 2 like the Bulldog, Needler, and Heat Wave? Anyway, here are the stats. And my recommendations. Again, not sure what 343 is trying to do with this gun. Obviously it's a precision automatic hybrid rifle. It just depends on what power level 343 wants it to be. Because with Halo 5, 343 looked at the SMG and Storm Rifle, uh, Storm Rifle and said they're tier 1. But over time as we kept using them, they were kind of heading into that tier 2 territory because their damage output was absolutely insane. By the way, I'm talking about pre-patch Halo 5, before 343 nerfed a lot of weapons in that game. But maybe decreasing its headshot damage uh, by one could help the sidekick fight back a bit. Speaking of the sidekick, I really like this thing. It's the Halo 2 pistol, only if it was actually good. I do think it needs a little pick-me-up though, so here are the current stats. And here are my recommendations. I think these changes will help this gun fight against the BR and Commando. Probably have, a, probably have to slightly decrease the rate of fire so it doesn't sh outshine the AR at close range. A quick side note I want to get out there is that I've noticed a huge debate going on on Twitter talking about if the AR is good is, is uh, too good or not, or if it's fine the way it is. Look, the AR is supposed to be good at close and even at a solid mid-range. But even if you get that solid mid-range, you probably don't want to use the AR. That's when your pistol comes into play. If you're only using the AR in all, your in all of your engagements, then that's a problem. And there wouldn't be a point for, uh, to have a pistol in the first place. Your pistol should be used at longer ranges and should be competing against other precision rifles. Moving swiftly along, next is the plasma pistol. Let's get through this quick, so here are the stats. Recommendations. Now I know decreasing the body shot count down to 12 is controversial, but is it really that big of a deal? This, is uh, this thing will always be a pea shooter no matter what. Besides, much like the Pulse Carbine, you'd probably want to use it to strip shields and instead of health anyways. Next up is the Bulldog, and I know I was on that, bag, on that bandwagon of this thing replacing the classic shotgun we've had for years. However, this shotgun is different enough to where the classic shotgun could still have a place in the weapon sandbox. So here are the current stats. And my recommendations. The rate of fire is fine, but I'd like it to be faster as this thing is very fun to shoot. However, to compensate this, I'd recommend decreasing its round count by one. That way the heat wave, and probably whenever the classic shotgun makes a return, could have a larger round count. But both the classic shotgun and heat wave are balanced because you have to reload one shot at a time, versus the Bulldog's quick mag swap. Speaking of the heat wave, that's up next. This definitely feels like 343's definitive version of the scatter shot. It's definitely a very weird and unique shotgun. It makes you want to see other creative and gimmicky things they can do with their per other Promethean weapons. So here are the stats.
And here are my suggestions. Definitely need the damage buff because I had one instance where I shot a guy point blank and then went for a melee. I didn't kill him and I died. So that's why I think I could use a damage buff. Lastly, I think the old fire needs a bit of a rework because the bouncing projectiles are unique, but they're nothing more than just a gimmick. Which is why uh, you see the recommendations on screen. The Halo 5 scatter shots bouncing projectiles homed in on the opponent on the opponent's like last location. And it was really nice. It wasn't overpowered and it was reliable from time to time. Next is the Needler, and I gotta say, it is definitely functioning a bit differently in Infinite. And by that I mean this thing is supposed to be a weird automatic with homing projectiles that explodes when multiple shots connect. But the weird thing about it is that this thing is an automatic weapon that ironically sucks at close range, but it's really good at long range. Here, in Infinite, th uh, this thing is now basically an SMG, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It still homes in at range, however it's not as good like in previous games. It's kind of back to being shit like in Halo 1 and 2. So the solution to fix that was just to make it an SMG. And you know what? I think it's fine, and it's definitely fun to use. So here are the stats. My suggestions. Now look, I'll be honest, I don't know anything about coding or really how much world units affect the game. So that's why I only recommend one or two world units. And to keep the needler in check, so it's not too ridiculous, I recommend decreasing its needle count that you see on screen. Next is a sniper. Here are the stats. My recommendations. For some reason 343 decided to give this gun spread when firing from the hip, which a sniper has never had before, so 343 please remove that and literally copy the bloom from reach. Next is the skewer. This thing is awesome but very difficult to use. I'm honestly not sure what to do with it, so here are the stats. My recommendations. Now I'm not sure about increasing the projectile velocity as this thing is, you know, I don't want it to be another like insta-kill sniper that's easy to use or something. But I think definitely the, the next two are like for sure. like. Because this this thing has a slow projectile velocity, the second zoom kind of feels useless, and also the, the amount the amount of red around the scope is a bit too cluttering, and you know clutters the vision too much. So I like to see the decrease in red coloring when zoomed in. Next is the Ravager. I thought this thing looked like shit when it was first revealed. And it was just a giant rectangle on screen. But 343 did a good job in adding more detail and more colors, so it looks fine now. But anyways, here are the stats. My suggestion. So I'm assuming this thing is pretty much supposed to be a banished grenade launcher. So I guess a power weapon. So it could use maybe a... a the primary fire could use a blast radius increase. And maybe a rate of fire increase. I'm not sure about that one, but I think definitely the first one. And I don't really have much to say about the charge shot, because there were times it did damage and other times it did not. And I think that was an issue with the flight.
Finally, we come to the rocket launcher, and honestly, I had nothing to say on it. It functions like you'd expect. Last thing I want to quickly talk about is the equipment and spike grenades. So let's start with the drop wall. I'm not sure if I agree with carrying two of them, and I think I'd rather just pick up one. Also, the device that spawns the shield is very weak. It dies in one, one shot. Maybe make it three to four shots to destroy. Next is the threat sensor. This thing definitely needs a nerf since you, pick, since you can pick up two of them. I think we should only be able to pick up one, and I've noticed this thing pulses six times. I'd probably nerf it down to four times so it doesn't linger for too long. Lastly, I've noticed you can stick players with the threat with the threat sensor. While this is a funny gimmick you can do, I don't think players should be allowed to do this as you don't want players to become a walk to become a walking radar. And now for the spike grenades. Uh, they definitely need a bit of a buff because for some reason this thing doesn't kill you like in Halo 3. So I think it could use a damage buff and probably a slight increase or like or maybe not increase, a, a faster fuse time. And that's all I have to say. And that's the end of the video. If you like what you saw today, or if you agree with what I had to say, uh, please leave a like and share this video with anyone who's hyped for Halo Infinite. 343, I hope what I said was constructive, and I hope you were able to get something out of this video. With that being said, until next time, peace.